we are talking about It's the Way You Say It, Becoming Articulate, Well-Spoken, and Clear by Dr. Carol Fleming. Let's get straight to the point with 10 tips to help you become well-spoken. The first tip is to unify your message. There are three components of communication, your words, your tone, and your body language, and they must all be in harmony with each other and the message you're trying to convey. Just like it's hard to believe that the yawning child with heavy eyes isn't actually tired. When your words, tone, and body language send mixed signals, you lose credibility. Which leads me to tip number two, watch your tone. There's a very big difference between hello and hello. Our tone energizes our words and shows their true meaning. Try this experiment. Deliberately choose to use a happy tone the next time your spouse or friend calls you. Notice how they respond and don't be surprised if they comment that you sound happy or must be having a great day. Tip three is to keep a level head, literally. Now I have to admit, I never thought about my head positioning before until Carol said they call it level-headed for a reason. Your head position is a profound communicator of your attitude and can even indicate your level of self-esteem. Looking down can mean that you're shy or dismissive. Head cocked to the side can indicate immaturity, curiosity, or confusion. And nose pointed up can mean that you possess a better than you attitude, or in other words, you're stuck up. Level-headedness is associated with confidence, respect, and maturity. So remember to keep a level head. Tip four is to take a hint from the police and utilize simple declarative sentences. Put your hands up, drop the gun, turn off the motor, license and registration. See, simple declarative sentences are short and to the point. Not everything requires an explanation or an excuse. So use simple declarative sentences to assist you in sounding clear, confident, and concise. Tip five is a small investment, but will reap big rewards. Download a vocabulary building app and then commit five minutes a day to it. But don't try to use your fancy new vocabulary to impress people. The goal in boosting your vocabulary is to increase your ability to speak fluently while using appropriate language that will engage the listener, not confuse them. And this leads me to the next tip. Tip number six, Cater your language to your audience. Be respectful and courteous of those you speak with. Start speaking in a manner that they will understand to their concerns and get to the point insofar as it concerns them. We must understand there is a very big difference between self-expression and communication. Self-expression is a solo performance. The intention is to speak your mind with little regard to whom you're addressing. Whereas communication's primary intent is to share information while involving and interacting with the listener. Tip number seven is to listen to yourself talk and think before you speak. You must get in the habit of listening to yourself in conversation. Become aware of the fillers that you use. Are you concise or verbose? Do you answer the question or instead go on an unrelated tangent? Do you talk about yourself too much or too little? Do you use too many details or not enough details? Do you use lazy language? For example, I want to go instead of I want to go. To help you get in the habit of listening to yourself, do tip number eight, hit record on your voice. To improve at the fastest rate possible, you need to work on your weaknesses and the best way you can identify them is by recording your voice while in conversation and then listening back to it. Carol's website, it's a way you say it.com has a free vocal self evaluation to help you identify what you want to improve. I personally used a phone call recording app and then listened back to some personal and business calls while doing the vocal self evaluation. I was mortified. I had no idea my speech was full of fillers such as um and like nervous laughter and that I often trailed off or didn't even bother to finish a sentence. Needless to say, it was a very transformative and 
fun, motivating exercise for me, and I believe anyone can benefit from doing a vocal evaluation. Tip nine is to calm your nerves by shifting your focus. If you get nervous in conversation or avoid it all together, it's likely because you're too focused on yourself and worried about making a good impression. And I understand I just told you to listen to yourself, but that doesn't mean you need to be making it all about you. Carol says, going from self-centered to other-centered is your way out of discomfort. So self-centered conversation and thinking habits, worrying what they think about you, is going to sabotage real connection. Start using the acronym SLANT when you're in a conversation. It stands for smile, sit up straight or stand up straight, listen, ask questions, nod your head, and track with your eyes. Dale Carnegie said this, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. So check out my review of how to win friends and influence people for more other-centered communication strategies. And tip 10, after this video, which is almost done, venture over to YouTube and watch Amy Cuddy's TED Talk titled, Your Body Language Shapes Who You Are. She argues that the body language we have not only impacts other people's perceptions of us, but it actually influences our own feelings of adequacy and confidence. She will give you tips to improve your body language, and so will my review of her book, presence. So check out that review too. Now that is it for It's the Way You Say It. Remember to go to Carol's website and get the self vocal assessment and do the actualization worksheet, which will help you with tip number seven. There's a lot more to this book. If you have a specific speech impediment or just want to take your communication skills to the next level, I recommend you get a copy of it. Now let's end with a quote from Carol. There can be no greater investment in your social impact and your personal confidence than fluent, courteous, articulate speaking. Thank you for joining me and you make it a great day.